September 13th, the day I screamed louder than I ever have for a video game. Pikmin 4! Pikmin 4 was revealed. Now, days later, I am here to deliver a list of eight things I want to see in Pikmin 4. I am counting down the days to 2023. As of today, September 18th, we have 105 days until 2023. We are so close. Anyways, let's start. Pikmin is a pretty original concept. There are very few games out there like Pikmin. Originality is what Pikmin does best, and I think Pikmin 3 was when the designers hit their stride with originality. Specifically, map design. The five areas in Pikmin 3 were all pretty cool, well designed. The mission mode maps, on the other hand, were excellent. Some of the most fun and interesting maps I have ever seen in the franchise. The prime example is the Fortress of Festivity, the Christmas-themed level in Pikmin 3. The whole level is filled with presents. There's a tree. There's a, there's a pizza box for some reason. It's marvelous. It's probably my favorite Pikmin level ever. Seeing a scene come to life and being able to explore it is what Pikmin should do more. Which is why I popped off pretty dang hard when I saw a bench in the Pikmin 4 teaser. Give us more set pieces like this for levels in Pikmin 4. They're original, exciting, and deliver an experience unlike everything else. Like sure, I could go outside and go to a park and touch grass and sit on a bench, or I could turn on my video game and stand on a bench with my little dudes. I think we know the better option of the two. Pikmin 3's music was very pretty. Garden of Hope is something I listen to regularly because of how relaxing it is. But its relaxing nature is something that I don't want. Pikmin is a drop-dead gorgeous series. Graphically, Pikmin 3 still compares remarkably well to modern games outside of a few awkward textures. But I only want this beauty conveyed visually, not audibly. Pikmin is all about being trapped on a planet that can eat you alive at any second. None of the area themes in Pikmin 3 exude fear or discomfort. Excluding the formidable oak. <laughs> that, that music is genuinely horrifying. Oh my gee Christ! I want Pikmin 4 music to have an unsettling relaxation vibe. The prime example of this comes from Pikmin 1, The Distant Spring. This song is relaxing, but it also oozes an alien feeling while listening to it. It relaxes, but it also doesn't. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter. What matters is that I want Pikmin 4 music to give me that same sensation that Distant Spring gives me every time I land there. HowLongToBeat.com is an excellent website. If you type in Pikmin, you get six results. After covering up two of the six results, you're left with our meaningful Pikmin games and Pikmin 2 is still the longest Pikmin game. Longest Pikmin Game I would love for Pikmin 4 to claim the title of Longest Pikmin Game. I'm not saying shorter games are bad, they're great. Shorter the better is usually my motto. But man, I want a long and meaty Pikmin game. And how do we naturally extend a game's length? Caves. Bring back caves from Pikmin 2. Now, I don't want caves just because of length. I really enjoyed the caves in Pikmin 2. The many puzzles, collecting every treasure, facing a variety of enemies. Caves were really fun. I think there were too many caves in Pikmin 2 because every time I replay that game, I feel a bit tired by the time I reach the final two dungeons. The caves just lost their luster after a while but there's still an excellent addition, and Pikmin 4 should have caves, but, you know, like, less than 10 of them, not, not 14. K 
Caves add replay value, they add difficulty, and they're a staple to the franchise that shouldn't be omitted. Bring them back. And Boldman. Bring them back. They're, they're cool. They're cool. Pikmin 2 was a real mess of a game. In a good way. The developers literally threw everything they had at a wall and just hoped some of it would stick. I think that was a very general design belief at Nintendo during the GameCube era. <laughs> One thing Pikmin 2 got very, very right were the bosses. Honestly, bosses in the Pikmin franchises are so consistently great, but Pikmin 2 bosses were just batshit crazy at times, and I miss them. My specific example is Man at Legs, one of the most iconic bosses in Pikmin 2. Man at Legs is a mechanical spider with a machine gun. What the hell is this? Who thought of this? Every time I watch someone go through Pikmin 2 for the first time, I'm most excited to see their initial reaction to Man at Legs more than any other boss. What the? What the fuck? No! What? That is stupid. Oh, what the hell? This is just one of the many chaotic bosses found in the game. Pikmin 3 had some incredible bosses, but the Quaggled Mireclops was the only chaotic boss in my opinion, and I want more. So the moral of the story here is that they should bring back Man at Legs, just to get some more great reactions out there. Let's continue the Pikmin 2 praising because that game slaps! Pikmin 2 introduced upgrades, such as Rush Boots, which allows the captains to run faster, or the solar system, which brightens up caves, and the best upgrade ever, the Pluckaphone, an upgrade that allows a captain to use their whistle to pluck Pikmin. Pikmin 3 brought back upgrades, but they were all pretty simple and uninteresting. Defense up, fire resistance, electricity resistance, snore. The only cool one, which has to return, was the dodge whistle, an absolute game changer for Pikmin. It's almost like a dodge button should be in every game or something. I've been dragging Pikmin 3 through the mud a bit here, and I apologize. It's still a phenomenal game, and easily in my top 23 games of all time. But I have issues with it, and I hope Pikmin 4 doesn't have the same problems. My biggest frustration with Pikmin 3 was the story. In Pikmin 1 and 2, the story is pretty hands-off. There are a few tutorials, a bit of dialogue, but nothing too offensive or obstructive. It's very free and open, and the game doesn't feel like a hallway. In Pikmin 3, there are constant tutorials, dialogue, and the game never allows the player to fully explore until the very end. I enjoyed the story, but I just wish it wasn't shoved in our face so much. Pikmin 4 should go back to how Pikmin 1 and 2 told their story. Hands off, minimal dialogue, and doesn't force the player down one path. I do love Pikmin 3, though don't say I don't, I love it, I swear! Pikmin 2 introduced the world to purple and white Pikmin. Pikmin 3 introduced the world to rock and winged Pikmin. Naturally, Pikmin 4 would introduce the world to two more Pikmin, right? Well, I don't want that. I have two ideas here. The first, being what I would prefer, is that I'd rather have a game where no new Pikmin were introduced. Just give us the seven types we know, and, and maybe Boldman. I'm content with the seven types we have now, and I believe there's so much potential with puzzle and level design we still haven't seen for these types of Pikmin. But I do assume that they're going to give us two new types. And in that case, I hope White Pikmin, Winged Pikmin, and Rock Pikmin are all absent from the main story. Shove them into a side mode or something, because I would want Pikmin 4 to focus on Pikmin fusions. An example, throw a red Pikmin and a yellow Pikmin into a fusion candy pop bud, and bam, you get an orange Pikmin. Same with red and blue, you get purple, and yellow and blue, you get green. 
I think Pikmin Fusion would be a very fun way to spice up the original trio of Pikmin colors. And even though this is my own suggestion, I have issues with it. Like green Pikmin likely never happening because they'll blend in with the grassy environments too much, or orange Pikmin existing because colorblind gamers will struggle identifying them. So perhaps Pikmin Fusion would also alter Pikmin physically as well? I'm not sure, but either way, I would really like there to be no new Pikmin types, and if there are, I hope they incorporate Pikmin Fusion in some way. Pikmin fans have been waiting 10 years for a new mainline entry, but there was another Pikmin game that released in that decade. Hey Pikmin, a 2D puzzle platformer that released in 2017. In this game, was a video game. It's my least favorite Pikmin game, and uh, it, this one is definitely not in my top 23 games of all time. I'm not even sure if it's in my top 230 games of all time. I do not like Hey Pikmin, but it had some really cool ideas for the franchise, and I hope Pikmin 4 takes some cues from it. For one, including the enemies from Hey Pikmin would be a nice way to tie in this spin-off into the franchise more. I don't have much particular attachment to the enemies, but I would enjoy seeing them nevertheless, just for continuity's sake. In Hey Pikmin, Olimar had a literal jetpack he could use to fly over small gaps. This was really neat, and I'd love to see it incorporated in a 3D environment, w without breaking the game of course. Please don't make this a broken mechanic. If Pikmin 4 does have Winged Pikmin, I'd love to see the Winged Pikmin abilities expanded upon. Technically Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS did it first, but Hey Pikmin also had it. Having Winged Pikmin carry Olimar in certain areas and situations. It could create new strategies and new puzzle possibilities. And this is kind of cheating because it didn't originate in Hey Pikmin. But bring back treasures. I didn't mind collecting just fruit in Pikmin 3, but it's infinitely more interesting when you're gathering objects from our world. Like collecting Rob in Pikmin 2. That was one of the coolest moments in Pikmin history. My personal favorite treasure actually comes from Hey Pikmin though, which was a cartridge of Donkey Kong Land called Enduring Partnership. The name was referencing Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong's teamwork in the game but I've always viewed it as a double entendre where it can mean that, or mean, ironically, that the game was made by Rareware, a studio that Nintendo was very close with in the 90s before Microsoft bought them. It probably doesn't mean that, and I'm reading into it too much, but I can't help make that connection. But bring back treasures, they're so fun to collect and, and so much more interesting than just simple fruit. Hey Pikmin wasn't a good game in my eyes, but it had a ton of cool ideas that I hope Pikmin 4 uses. And that's it. Those are 8 lovely things I hope are in Pikmin 4. What do you think will be in Pikmin 4? Are you excited? Do you like Hey Pikmin? Let me know in the comments! Now I'm off to go stare at the clock waiting for it to turn 2023, and I don't mean 8.23pm, I mean 2023!